radio. This is a Taylor Hobson Model A engraving machine. It's even got a plate on the front of it to tell you it is. It's the smallest in the range. The Model D is good and it's a big and floor mounted. But never mind, this bench mounted thing does quite alright. It's got a good spindle. There you are. There we are. I've got the cutter spindle there. There's a little Frackmore mortar. And this is a pantograph arrangement. Uh, which, if we move it around. Ooh, there we go. Now then, at the moment, we've got it set at 4 to 1. So if we move the stylus one inch, obviously we get a quarter of an inch movement here. So it's quite easy to make your own templates, your own layouts of what you want to engrave. This one's for an equation of time engraved brass plate. I've just got an order in for this and I needed to make a new batch. So here's the here's the plate itself. We will get the light the right way. Ah, here we are. And shows how clock time is constant and the time that's indicated on a sundial varies throughout the year. That's the interesting thing. So it's near coincident in January, you can see that in February it oscillates, drifts like mad back up again in May to the opposite down again and way above to plus 16 minutes October November it's quite interesting this difference between sundial time and clock time and you really need one of these engraved plates so that your sundial can tell you accurately what time it is otherwise you'll always have this variation it's constant throughout according to this little engraved plate and you think they stick on a sundial somewhere so we've got the master. You can see we've got two minutes per division here, these vertical divisions. We've got the months marked off along here and a general title, the equation of time. So as we, for instance, move the stylus over to the beginning of the equation of time, each time the stylus is in a letter to engrave, we come along here very quickly and drop the cutter a little felt tip pen mark to tell you when it's the right place. We drop the cutter and obviously can engrave that character. Then we lift the cutter again quickly, get on to the next one. It's quite a quick activity once you get going, but it's got to be set up right, that's the problem. So we'll make sure the cutter's high, pull it out, and here's the actual workpiece. Here's the plate all the hellish light problems. Um, now then, there's two clamps obviously. And through experiment, I've found that we need a 3 thou tapering shim underneath here. 3 thou there, 2 th So that's the 3 thou there, 2 thou there and a shim. There's a piece of copy of paper which one is 4 thou. To get these little shims, it's quite easy. You just need, you need some cigarette papers. Little Rizzlers. We know they're 1 thou thick. So here we fold one twice, gives us 3 thou. Then cut most of it away until he's just a tooth out thickness for most of that uh, width underneath the plate. That'll function right. The only other bugbear with this machine uh, this is a bit tricky. You've got to move, obviously, this whole assembly, the pantograph assembly, by means of this. That's better reset the aperture. So this little thing is um, divided in one thousandth of an inch per division, if I knew what I'm talking about. And so the little thing moves up and down. There we go. And we alter the depth by means of the hand wiggle. If you don't have one of these, you are stuck with purely guessing what depth your cutter is by means of touching with the cutter and then dropping down what you think is appropriate. That is a non-starter as far as I'm concerned. You don't know where the hell you are. And if your cutter perhaps chips or breaks halfway through, how do you set it again to the same depth? This is the only way to work. So it's a rigid little assembly. It's quite good actually. There we go. I've had this machine for about 30 years. Uh, a man down in Derby said, uh, there's a one going, do you want it? So he actually bought it on the spot for me and uh, we settled up on the, the money later on. And uh, there it is. It's not CNC, but we seem to get results somehow. People have been using these for many decades. There we are. It makes a bit of a racket as well when it's switched on, but we'll just leave it for now. There we are. This is another template I use to make uh, the sundial. Here we are. Now this has got marked on. That'll pick that up. The equinox, the winter solstice, and the summer solstice. It's all on a rotating disc. There's the central 
location hole, the axle, and obviously by means of this location pin I can lift it out and put one of the three positions into a position that I want it to be. In actual fact in this case it will be swung around to that direction. Ah, that's better, reset the aperture. And so this is, as the Celtic pen tells us, Caput or NVG. Uh, oh yeah, I see I've been engraving the E there and it isn't, hasn't come out right. So the whole thing is reject. That's, that's engineering mate, if it ain't right it's in the bin. So I've kept that really, we can uh, set up an engraving from that in the future and it's an object lesson to uh, take care. There's a horizontal scale that's um, riveted to it, an assembly jig that I use and what else have we got? Oh yeah, we've got another template. There's also on part of the mounting a series of engraved divisions which is one degree latitude per division. It means that if you move home you can find where you are from the map and reset your dial so it's spot on again because obviously your position above the equator matters very much to the dial time telling it well, not only the right time but also indicating the solstice uh, for summer and winter and so it's quite interesting and I was thinking about this the other day I think the important thing uh, with ancient prehistoric peoples why they wanted to know particularly the winter solstice is the fact from then from that point they could mark off uh, their pagan festivals such as the first festival in bulk which is to do with the lactation of ewes and of course at the same time a week before that we get the increased bird song increased light levels so I think in bulk is about 40 days from the sun at its lowest point so it's obvious being agricultural economies they want to know when the sun's at its lowest it's absolutely vital it was their whole world their whole lives so that's what we do making sundials Right, just thought I'd add this, it's a shame not to show this jig. This thing here clamps as a jig to hold whatever scale we're working on. If we want to engrave not only the solstice, equinox, but also the numerals. This is a rotating disc. Pin lifts out, we place it through another hole, so we can rotate it to get another numeral. Obviously it's got to be clamped down, this is only a quick setup for the purposes of the little fun. Anyway, so we've got all, new, all our numerals there that we want to engrave, plus a couple more on the other side of that disc. And then we'll come down to this thing. And if we take out the copper scale, on the other side, we can see that there's a wedge. This is a wedge. Very, very long, finely tapered wedge. And because of that, this top piece, these two neoprene covered bars, rise and fall. Just sufficient. So you can shove the scale in, right, underneath, push the wedge along, which forces this rising and falling carriage or clamp piece to come down onto the copper scale. Um, it means that if you've got all the numerals to engrave, plus your on the on the horizontal piece and your solstice markings on the vertical, you obviously don't want to be clamping and reclamping 12, 15 times. A dial, so you use this thing. You can just see the there you go, it rises. Watch it foot, watch it clamp down. It's gone down very slightly, but sufficient. It's very it's cleverly made to clamp that. It's a quite clever little thing. It's durable, it's accurate, and because you're working onto this fixed surface, it means that once you've set your cutter and you know that there's no variation in your material thickness, you know you're going to get the results you want. And of course, obviously, we've got this guide strip here. It's a bit flimsy, a little bit on the flimsy side, but I think I was, uh, that was dictated by the fact that I haven't got much room in there, height-wise or width-wise, due to whatever bits of metal I had at the time. You just pick up the pieces of metal and make to the pictures in your head. That's how I do most of these things. Decimal sizes are on paper, but everything else is pictures in the head. So there is the, there it goes back along, very gently tapered sliding wedge. It's quite useful that. Being a toolmaker, you can't help but think of how, how you can tool up for it, how you can speed the process or control the process by simple jigs and tooling to eliminate error, which is called scrap.